Several psychoanalysts and psychiatrists argued immediately after the storming, violent storming of Capitol Hill, when there was an election in the United States where some people were extremely unhappy with the result and called the election fraudulent, which led to a, a violent insurrection. Some psychologists have argued that one of the reasons why the United States, which was viewed as having a very stable democracy, is actually always on the edge of this kind of anarchy is because they don't have a royal family. They have something they're very proud of, which is a written constitution, a bit of paper. But they don't have a head of state. The argument goes that having a head of state provides a kind of stability because people can split their affection for this head of state away from their consternation and annoyance with elected officials whom they don't like quite a lot of the time. In other words, this psychological defense mechanism of splitting, which a royal family allows you, having a separate head of state from the prime minister, allows people to cope much better when an unpopular government is elected. People forget that Adolf Hitler was elected in a democratic way. He didn't use violence to get to power, he used a democratic election. There may have been violence in other parts of his rise to power. And some people have argued that the rise of fascism in Germany was precisely because they'd done away with the Kaiser, their equivalent of the royal family, roughly 15 years earlier. So there is an argument that having a head of state who stands as protector of basic ancient values prevents extremist governments. That's another argument for the psychological significance of having a royal family. Psychologists and psychiatrists have argued that the royal family have a deeper psychological significance than we realize because we always basically have a problem with authority. On the one hand, we want to look up to authority figures like doctors or the prime minister. We need someone to be in control, in charge. We need to entrust our destiny in the hands of people who we think and we allow to be in control and in charge and who we obey because we take comfort from the fact that someone's in charge and in control. But on the other hand, we resent being ordered about. We resent having our freedoms curtailed by authority figures. So we have a psychological problem. On the one hand, we need authority figures psychologically, but on the other hand, we resent them. So one psychological theory about the role the royal family plays in a democracy is it allows us to split off these two feelings and therefore contend with them. We split off the need for an authority figure into our affection for the royal family and we split off our disagreement, our discontent with authority figures we don't like in the, in, the, in the sense of the Prime Minister who we're unhappy with from time to time and that allows us to accept the authority of the government in the United Kingdom. In other words, these strong psychological conflicts within us between resentment over being governed and acceptance of being governed is aided psychologically by the presence of a crown as the head of state. There's a very interesting psychological theory about the deep need within all of us for what's referred to as an upwardly directed relationship. And this goes back to our childhoods when we all had parents. And these parents or caregivers or the people looking after children had authority and we looked up to them and that was extremely important in our upbringing. We depended on them. So we need an upwardly directed relationship which dates back from our childhood and maybe continues into adult life. We want to look up to certain people, maybe the police or doctors or the government. This strong need for an upwardly directed relationship and this need to defer, to, to act in deference to people in authority is assisted by our love for figures like the royal family. 
and it's threatened by democracies where sometimes unpopular governments are elected. So this need for an upwardly directed relationship is embodied in our relationship with the royal family and runs very deep in our unconscious. In 1983, a large national survey was done of the British public, asking them how important did they think the monarchy was. Just under two-thirds of the population, well over 50%, rated the monarchy as being very important. When that survey was repeated recently, before the coronation, that number had dropped from just under two-thirds to now just under a third a very significant drop in the sense of the British public viewing the monarchy as very important. But is one of the reasons why the coronation is psychologically very significant is back in the 80s and now when people are being surveyed, they hadn't been a coronation for several decades. Is there a sense in which the psychological significance of a coronation is a bit like the significance of a wedding in relationship to marriage? When you haven't been to a wedding for a long time or haven't been to your own wedding, it may be possible to get a bit cynical and a bit downbeat about marriage. But then you go to a wedding and it's an optimistic, cheerful celebration and you get re-energized in your attitude to marriage. Is the relationship between a coronation and our marriage with the royal family a bit like that of a wedding and a marriage? You need a coronation every once in a while to rekindle the excitement, the interest and the reverence for this ancient institution. You could argue that we have had celebrations of what it is to have a royal family in the United Kingdom every once in a while. You've had jubilee celebrations and other celebrations, but a coronation is something very special, particularly when it hasn't happened for many decades. A coronation is psychologically significant because it reaffirms the allegiance between the subjects and the king or queen who is being crowned. It's a very special moment which goes back to the fundamental origins of what it is to have a monarch. And it is no accident that the ceremony repeats certain rituals that goes back centuries, if not up to a thousand years. This very strong sense of continuity with the past, with something that has lasted for generations, and therefore the psychological hint will continue to last for generations to come is extremely important, perhaps the most important element in what maintains the allegiance of the subjects to the crown.